Hi everybody. Today we're going to be talking about the in situ biological treatment of contaminated soil. This is the use of microorganisms and or vegetation to degrade, remove, or immobilize pollutants in the soil. Compared to ex situ and excavation methods, it costs less and is able to target deep contamination. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, it can be broken down into two remediation techniques, bioventing and phytoremediation. Let's start with bioventing. Bioventing is an in situ remediation technology that uses indigenous microorganisms to biodegrade organic pollutants found in the unsaturated zone. Bioventing occurs in the unsaturated zone as you can see below. Bioventing involves the injection of air into the soil. The addition of air enhances the activity of the microorganisms already present leading to an accelerated rate of degradation of the pollutants. Bioventing targets these chemicals in particular, benzene, acetone, toluene, phenol, or their derivatives. In other words, petroleum products including gasoline, jet fuel, kerosene, and diesel fuel. Advantages are that the equipment is easily available and easy to install. It's a cost competitive process, about $10 to $50 per cubic meter. It doesn't cause much site disturbance and can be placed in inaccessible areas, for example under buildings. The treatment time is short and varies from 6 months to 2 years. Disadvantages are that at times the concentrations of the pollutants may be toxic to the indigenous microorganisms. This causes a problem since the microorganisms are crucial to the bioventing process. Unfortunately, it's not applicable for certain types of soil such as heavy clay. The next in situ biological treatment method we're going to discuss is phytoremediation. Basically, phytoremediation is the use of plants to clean up contaminated soil, water, air, or sediment. In the case of soil remediation, you start with some soil that's contaminated with pollutants like petroleum hydrocarbons, chlorinated solvents, pesticides, explosives, or landfill leachates. Then you plant certain species of trees or plants that are naturally capable of extracting, degrading, immobilizing, or volatilizing these contaminants to remove them from the soil. Phytoremediation can be classified into five different sub-processes. Phytoextraction, phytodegradation, phytovolatilization, rhizodegradation, and phytostabilization. In phytoextraction, a plant species specific to the contaminant of concern is grown in contaminated soil. The ability of the plant to uptake the contaminant is limited to the extent of its rooting zone. Contaminants are absorbed and stored in the roots, stems, and shoots. It is not desirable to choose species that accumulate contaminants in their leaves, fruits, or seeds because this exposes herbivores to these toxins. Some plants have the ability to accumulate more contaminants than others, and all plants are able to self-regulate in order to limit their toxic exposure. Plants that phytovolatilize contaminants first uptake and then transform pollutants within plant tissue using metabolic processes. The plant then moves contaminants to the leaves where they're transpired in volatile form. Phytostabilization occurs in the root zone. Plant roots entrap and absorb or adsorb contaminants to reduce their migration. This prevents water erosion, leaching, and soil dispersion of pollutants. Rhizodegradation is a process which promotes microbial degradation within the rhizosphere. The rhizosphere is considered to be the combination of the root zone and the soil in contact with the roots. So how exactly does this work? Rhizodegradation depends on the action of plant roots, the associated microflora, and or their excretion products to destroy the contaminant in the root zone. The plants involved in rhizodegradation release sugars, alcohols, acids, and other nutrients to promote a better living environment for the microorganisms, such as yeast, fungi, and bacteria, that break down the toxins. Similar to rhizodegradation, phytodegradation breaks apart the toxins and converts them into safe compounds. Phytodegradation utilizes enzymes instead of microorganisms. These enzymes are capable of breaking down chlorinated solvents, PCPs, PCBs, herbicides, and pesticides. 
As the plant uptakes these toxins, the enzymes convert them into non-toxic compounds, therefore remediating the soil. Phytoremediation is an excellent solution for areas of widespread, shallow soil contamination. However, this is a slower remediation process and is climate dependent. It is also limited by the plant's capacity to uptake certain contaminants. Hope you learned a lot. Thanks for watching.